Hello, and welcome to 6DOF Reviews. I am Pete Austin, and today it's time for a bit of a blast from the past. Because I would like to talk to you, sweet viewer, about one of my personal favorite games, and that is Population One. Now, Population One has been out for a long time. It is an elder statesman of the Quest platform. At the time that it was released, we did put together a full review, but it never got a video on the channel. It was only on the website. You are still reading us on the website, right? So we never did a full video. And it occurs to me, to us, to the team, that with the new Phoenix Royale update, now might be a good time to rectify that. So, what I'm going to do, and hopefully we'll put some timestamps in to make it easier, is I'm going to give you the Have You Been Living Under a Rock update into what Population 1 is in and of itself. I'm going to reiterate what a tremendous score it received and still should receive. And then we'll talk a little bit about the Phoenix Royale update. Now, we were given press access and we were given permission to talk to you about this when the embargo was lifted. However, at that point, I hadn't really played many games. I'd played two games in the press setting with uh, colleagues from Upload, with some uh, other people from other publications, uh, and Eric from Big Box explaining everything to us. And it wasn't exactly enough to tell us how this game will play in the wild. So we waited. I've now spent the uh, pre-release weekend uh, playing as many games as I can. And now I feel I can talk a little bit more about not just the components that make the Phoenix Royale update, but whether or not it's any good. So if you're just here to find out about the update, skip to insert time now. But if you haven't played Pop 1 and you'd like to know more, Listen on. <laughs> the Population 1, as I mentioned, has been out since October of 2020. It is a Battle Royale game, uh, sort of the quest's answer to Fortnite, if you will. I hate that comparison, as I'm sure the developers do. Big Box were incredibly successful. In the first four months of this game's release, they made $10 million. Everyone loved this game at release, and there's every reason why that is. It's a class act all the way through. So even if Battle Royale isn't your particular ouvoir, it's so well delivered that I defy you not to have some fun in playing it. So the game goes out in squads of three. Uh, you can drop anywhere on the map, and the map is really well thought out. Um, it's really enhanced by excellent graphical choices and art direction, insofar as I'm not saying that the textures are popping and it's going to be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen, but the draw distances are excellent. It's got some of the best sniper scopes that exist in VR. And it just, everything about how it was put together visually was done in such a way to complement the gameplay. And the gameplay is really evidently at the heart of how this has been made. So you go in your squad of three, you spend a bit of time looting around, or you just jump straight into it. It depends on where your opponents all drop. You find guns, you find guns of different quality, you find ammo, you find various bits and bobs, and you set about the task of being the last people standing. Uh, and that's it. Uh, as you will know, Battle Royale has the shrinking zone. So the uh, a red mist encroaches on you, uh, and if you stay in the mist, you start taking damage. So you want to get away from the mist, find the high ground, tactical advantage, all of that jazz, uh, and sally forth towards battle and victory. So as you're sallying forth, as I mentioned, one of the things to think about is the guns and the gunplay, and I think it is so on point. The reloads are manual, but not so finicky manual like in Pavlov or perhaps even Contractors. You don't need to have handled weapons or have studied each weapon. It's glowing yellow it tells you what to do it's just enough to engage the physicality of vr without overloading you with more cognitive process than you actually need the other thing that is truly phenomenal about the game is as large as the map is literally everything is climbable you can if you can put your hand next to it you can grab it and you can climb it it gives the combat a verticality which is unparalleled i think in any other competitive shooter the only gripe I have about it, and it really is about the only gripe I have, I love this game. I really, I, I, I won't say best because it 
It's horses for courses, isn't it? But I will say favorite. It is my favorite competitive shooter in VR. Um, the only thing I will say is with any game like this, the skill curve can be a bit of a bastard. And unfortunately what happens is sometimes you'll get dropped into a lobby with these god tier players and you wander around for five, ten minutes finding some gear and then you get shot in the face. And your whole team gets shot in the face and you go, oh, oh, that was, that was it, was it? Okay, we'll just go back and start again. That was just about my only problem with it. And this is a lovely segue onto Phoenix Rising because that experience uh, from the discussions we had with people from Big Box was a large part of why they've done the Phoenix Rising update. So, just to finish off, when Population 1 first released, we gave it a notable 9 out of 10. Since its release, it has been updated constantly with new modes, new features, a map editor. Uh, it is as relevant today as it was before, if not more so. That 9 out of 10 maintains it absolutely it for a four-year-old game or thereabouts it absolutely holds up as one of the best games in modern mobile vr so i'll finish off my mini review of population one there so phoenix royale the new mode that's coming out the new map that's coming out has been very much crafted around the idea that that experience of pottering about until you're killed by a god tier player and you have no fun let's try and do something that differs from that so first of all let's talk about the map it's the same basic gameplay with some tweaks but the map is all new it is just as large it is really dense and detailed and i think one of the big key factors about it is there aren't many expanses where you can be kind of cluelessly wandering about and get picked off by somebody from halfway across the map it is lots of nooks and crannies. It's really detailed. And as you play it more and more, I think the, the nuance of the map will really come out and shine. Uh, it is definitely built in that way that if you don't know where you're getting shot from, you can find cover. There's cover everywhere. And, and it, it will ease that sense of just getting sniped by good players and then that being game over. What I will say, the drawback to this incredibly dense map is... It can be a little bit hard to find other players. So there's 18 players in a game that's uh, six squads. And yeah, sometimes it can be really hard to work out which direction you should be going. It's hard to get those tells for where the other squads are. So just something to be mindful of. As much as it provides extra cover for people to scuttle under, it also means that it can be really hard to find where the action is in order to engage. And that's where following the sound cues becomes really, really important. Other things that have changed with this game to make it easier for uh, newer players is redeploys. So it's still a battle royale. The encroaching uh, red death still comes in, but in the early part of the game, if you do get knocked down, you can get revived by your teammates in the original fashion, or if you wait just a very short amount of time, you'll be redeployed. And basically that means you get dropped out of the sky again and you parachute back in to the action. You can make the decision because you, you're given enough time as you fall to decide whether or not you want to jump straight back in with your team and join the fight again. Or perhaps if you're outmatched, it gives you a little bit of time to run away, run away, and so on and so forth. The redeploy time that you wait gets longer over time, so as you progress towards the end of the, the game, you will have to wait even longer, and then there'll come a certain point where they will effectively turn that off. Redeploys are no longer available, uh, and it is, once again, a fight to the death. So keep in mind, if all three members of your squad get downed at the same time, you can only redeploy while there is at least one member of your squad standing, so if you all go down at the same time, that's it, you're done. And then once the game gets to a certain point, they'll give you fair warning. They'll say, Phoenix redeploy, ending soon. Uh, and then you know that you pretty much have to start playing a bit more cautiously. So what that does, not just allowing you to make mistakes and then get back into it and focus on having fun, it means your kill count is higher. And for someone like me who's quite casual, I never go in with the expectation that I'm going to win. But what I do want to do is at least do a bit of damage knock out a couple of people get a few kills and as long as that happens i feel satisfied and i feel encouraged to go back in for another game it is kind of on the, the new mode does that really well because you have more chances to knock people out you've got that element of people redeploying 
And you can get into these if you want. You get into these rolling battles as you're sort of making your way through the map with another squad next to you. And your squad and their squad just keep picking each other off and redeploying. And you can come out of a game where you came fifth, which is second last, but you also got eight kills. And that still is good times. That is good fun to be had. And I really appreciate it. So other little things that have changed, they have in included some PvE elements, which is really quite fun. There are, on most maps, I believe it's two loot caches, where it's like a bit of a capture the flag sort of deal. If you can hold an area for the designated amount of time, you get a whole bunch of currency with which you can upgrade your weapons, and you get some nice, cool weapons. But it's not easy. There is an army of bots in there, so while there are other squads trying to pick you off, you're also clearing out the bots, and from my experience, these bots are no easy thing. They're, they can be a bit intense sometimes. Uh, so that's another really cool element that's been added. Uh, and if you want, you can ignore the other teams and just focus on killing the bots and grabbing the loot. And that's a viable option as well. Uh, instead of having weapons scattered liberally through the area, there are, I think they're called loot crates. Basically, you walk up to the crate, it opens up, and that's where your weapons and ammunition are. It springs out a selection of things for you to choose from. There are also, uh, I really apologize that I don't remember the exact verbiage of this, but there are also caches where you spend your in-game currency, the gems, and you can do things like upgrade your weapons. So rather than having to find a four-star uh, weapon of choice, you can find a one-star, save up a bit of currency, and then just go over and upgrade the one that you like the best so that it is shit hot. And that's fun too. There's also character classes. So you can buy yourself a character class and that will improve certain stats, uh, which is also really, really fun. So all in all, I would say it's a incredibly good update. It adds a lot to the game that wasn't already there. The only thing I wonder, and I already noticed this on the trial weekend, and we'll see what happens when, when the beast goes live, but will it split the player base? Does Population 1 have enough active users to flesh out both lobbies now i've had a couple of great full lobbies in the new phoenix royale mode and i've had a number of matches where it was me versus bots because no one else was playing so this is my only concern and again this is a concern with any live service game is how will this affect matchmaking and how will this affect play account those concerns aside because i don't have the answer for that it's fantastic. It really does. It gives you options. You can go and play the classic mode, which is still fantastic. 9 out of 10. Well deserved. And you can play it that way. Or if you fancy something just a little bit different, but not altogether game changing, you can go and play this new mode. Uh, and I really do think it's, it's well worth the time and effort that Big Box have put into this. So... You know, it's not often we do a free-to-play game on this channel. Usually the risk is so low that you can just try it for yourself. But as this, I think, is one of the... It's in my top five. This is one of my top five games. It is an absolutely phenomenal piece of work from the developers. I thought it was worth telling you all about. So, there you have it. Go play yourselves some Population 1. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you would rather I wrote everything down and didn't ramble off the cuffs, tell me that in the comments. And if you think that we should be nominated for several awards because of our fantastic awesomeness and excellent fantasticness, click the subscribe button now. Nine out of ten. Still got it. Uh, I've heard good things about both. Oh, there's a whole team right here. Someone's coming at me.